Gentlemen, welcome to Inventor 2017 and the new presentation environment in Inventor. Right. I don't know how many people watching this will have actually used the old Inventor IPN environment, but Autodesk have essentially ditched it. They've ditched it and they've replaced it and overhauled it with something new. If you've ever had a meeting with your, with your local CAD supplier, there's a chance they've probably tried to flog you a program called Inventor Publisher. Now, the history of this program, just in a very, very, very small nutshell, is Autodesk acquired a bit of software, rebranded it as Inventor Publisher and tried to sell it to technical authors. The documentation team, the guys in the office who create the technical manuals and brochures and instruction manuals for your products. They don't use CAD. In, in a lot of offices, they don't use CAD as a separate team. However, that product completely flopped. It was a brilliant idea, but the execution of it was terrible. I believe that the software platform was limited. It couldn't handle large assemblies at all. Autodesk tried the hardest with it. They got it to link into Vault. They got it to they got it to do as much as they could. But at the end of the day, it was just it was just too unreliable. It was too uh, rough around the edges. The quality of the exports was too bad, and it just flopped completely. And then they just stopped development on it. And now we are where we are with Inventor. They've put the they've put the publishing tools back into Inventor for whatever reason. If you're a technical author, you're probably not going to like that. Now, they might in the future offer some kind of subscription offering where you can have a, an authoring tool via a subscription offering. I don't know. But at the moment, from what I've heard, the only way you can now create manuals and your, your, your brochures and your explosions and your presentations is with a license of Inventor. So we've kind of gone a step backwards in that respect. But it is what it is. Nothing we can do about that. So let's go to new. And you can see we've still got the IPN file format. And that's where my first beef comes in with this. I personally think Autodesk should have, whilst they were overhauling this, this environment, they should have plugged the presentation environment into the assembly template. It's not good. It's just not not a good idea. Why have a separate file for your presentation? You're creating a presentation of an assembly. Why not have that in the actual assembly itself? Doesn't make any sense to me. It's too, It's another file to manage. It's another file if you were using Vault to put under release control. It's just, why? Why? Uh, anyway, it's, it's not. There's nothing we can do about that, so I, I guess I'll just move on. So we'll start the IPN, and then we've got this new presentation environment. So you can see it's been overhauled. If you ever used the old IPN environment, it was sort of like a black sheep of the family, the old IPN environment. It looked dated. It hadn't seen any development in years. It was a bit awkward to use. A lot of the commands had funky names. They worked very strangely. They're just counterintuitive to the, how the rest of Inventor worked. So the overhaul should be, it should have brought it up to to 2017 standards. The first thing I don't like, the first thing I don't like is I've already got an assembly open. I've got MA, I've got this uh, 1178 assembly open, that break set, and when I've created the new presentation, it's not letting me use the open document that I can see. Can't see any drop downs, anything to pick the open, and you could do that in the old, uh, the old IPN environment. It would let you pick any assemblies you had already open in session. This one doesn't appear to do that. That's not good. That's a step backwards, but it's not really the end of the world. I'm not too fussed about it, but it's just a thing. Right, in the options, you can still pick to bring the assembly into the presentation environment at a view rep or a level of detail. So if you've already got a level of detail set with certain parts suppressed off, or a view rep set with certain parts set, the visibility is off, and you've got a configuration state set, you can bring that into the presentation environment. And then uh, there you go, as the assembly brought in. Right, it's it's a lot easier to use this. It's, it is a lot easier to use. I've had just five minutes to play around with this before I started recording this video, and it didn't take even five minutes to get familiar with this. It's that straightforward, and it is really quite intuitive. They've done a good job with it. They've done a good job with it. Whether or not it's going to be good enough for actual brochure creation and uh, manual creation, I don't know. I don't know. That's going to have to be left up to individuals expectations and standards i guess so what do you do what do you do right well you've got the storyboard along the bottom the storyboard is like a timeline and that's where you configure your actions and then you add them to the storyboard so for example if you want to show somebody how to disassemble something you would go to tweak components so a lot of the functions a lot of the terminology is still the same tweak components i don't like that that might be just me. I've not heard anyone else complaining about it, but I don't like the terminology tweak components. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. 
but it is what it is, right? Tweak components, and then you say, right, well, I want to show somebody how to disassemble this middle pedal, for example. So you pick up that bolt, hold down control, you pick up that one there, and then you'll grab one of the arrowheads, and then you'll pull it out of position to show somebody that these bolts come out of place. And then you click the tick, and then that's an action saved onto the timeline. Now, if you want to make that, that action last longer, by default, it's set at a two and a half seconds, but if you say, well, actually, that's a bit too long, I just want that action to be one and a half seconds, you can grab the end of the bars for those two bolt actions, and then you can grab them and then move them down to, say, 1.5 seconds, like so. And then you can preview your storyboard by using the animation buttons just above the storyboard. So you click rewind, and then click play, and you can see these bolts coming out uh, over one and a half seconds and it's pretty good it's got it's got an acceleration and a deceleration curve on the animation as well so you can see them slowly coming out and then slowly stopping as they decelerate which is nice i like that well done autodesk that's a nice little touch and then from there you just continue to to build your animation you just do further tweaks you can capture the camera as well so you can say right well whilst those bolts are coming out i want to capture the camera at this point here so you'd zoom into that area, you'd move the you'd move the timeline bar to the uh, to the to the point in time where you want the camera to change and you say capture the camera. And then you can say, right, well let's move it to two and a half seconds, and then I want the camera to be around here, and you say capture the camera. So if we rewind that and then hit play, so the camera's there for two and a half seconds, then it'll move to the new position over the next one second. So it's pretty intuitive. I like it. It's as simple as good. Autodesk, well done. Well done, simple as good. Right, another thing you can do in the presentation environment is work with snapshots. Now, this bit isn't so straightforward. I had to do a bit of digging to try and figure out how snapshots interact with the storyboard. And in actual fact, they don't at all. Snapshots are saved views of your presentation. So you can create your tweaks. Yeah, you can pull components out. So let's pull out these, these bolts. Let's make sure it's saved at a point where the bolts are pulled out. And then you can orbit the camera to a certain point right like around about here and you can create a new snapshot view so that's going to be view one you can give it a name uh, pedal set bolt out something like that and then that snapshot view is created and saved now you can jump backwards and forwards to your snapshot views you can create multiple snapshot views from multiple angles you can say right well now we're going to have one from here a new snapshot view and then you can sort of jump backwards and forwards between the two of them but once you've got your snapshot views created you can right click on them and then you can create a drawing view straight from the snapshot, which is really nice. That is really good. So you can pull out all your parts, you can explode all your components, and then you can right click or create a snapshot view, right click on it, create a drawn view, make sure your IPN saved, obviously, you know, it's like we want things saved. And then you create you pick your drawn template, and then it's going to create a drawn view straight away from that snapshot view. And you can see there it's the exact camera view that I asked for it to create, and then you can see the bolts are pulled out. So if you've got a full fully exploded component view, you're going to get a drawn view created with all of those components pre-exploded. And that's brilliant for parts lists and for getting things ballooned. That's really good. Really like that. The other thing you can do from your snapshot views is publish a raster view. So right click on there, publish to raster. And this is going to, it's just basically publish an image. It's export the view to an image file. And this is not brilliant. Again, I think they're going to, they're going to let themselves down here for multiple reasons. For a start, it's quite awkward to work with the, the resolutions, right? By default, it gives you anything up to 1080p. So in 1920 by 1080, if you want an image size larger than 1920 by 1080, you're going to have to manually type in uh, the width and height pixels in here. It's it's 2017, so the fact that this, I just don't like it when the standard resolutions stop at like a really old fashioned, old format. You know, 4K is quite common now. At least give us a 4K option here. That would be nice, but it's not there. But you can custom program it and you can say, give us a custom resolution and you can put in something like 3840 by 2160, something like that. But then it doesn't let you punch in your own custom uh, pixel resolution I, and I don't know why I honestly don't know why it doesn't let you but 72 pixels per inch it's just not good enough that's not good enough for uh, brochures and for sales material so that's not brilliant don't like it but it is what it is if you set the, uh, the instead of pixels if you set that to millimeters uh, then it does I, I don't understand it honestly I, I don't understand it but it is what it is so we'll go to pixels and then uh, and then 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 and then, then and then you can set your output file name the location and then the file format so if you go for bmp bmp tends to be the most uncompressed image type i think uh, or if you want to to try and work with some transparency you can set it to png click ok and it's going to create your image now if i didn't really look at where it was saving that to my documents obviously right so let's hope there's nothing dodgy in there <laughs> it's browse to my documents folder 
Uh, no, we're fine, we're fine. So here's the image itself. I'll just maximize that. And that's what it looks like. Now, if you zoom in on it, let's, uh, let's have a look at some of the, the quality. No, you can see, you can see it's going to be it's going to look different on the YouTube video after I've rendered this and uh, uploaded it but the image edge quality is not brilliant it's quite distorted it's quite pixelated it's broken up uh, it's not great and you've also you've got no oh, Autodesk right Autodesk did you speak to anybody in the real world before you designed this tool because I, I don't think you did nobody is going to want to export a full color model from the publisher environment to a picture if they wanted to do that they would do a print screen a print screen would be fine. Most people are going to want to export a technical uh, line drawn, white and black. White background, black lines, that's it. It's for manual. Manuals don't have fully shaded views in them, or very rarely they do. So why is there no options here to, to pick that? Why can't I set the background to be white from this? If I want to do a white background, black line export, I've got, I've got to go to the actual application options of Inventor. No word of lies, this is what you've got to do. You've got to go to the colors, you've got to change it to presentation, one color, then you've got to go to the view options inside Inventor and then change this to uh, the visual style to wireframe with visible edges only. Uh, but the, the quality of the edges is just dreadful. It is absolutely dreadful. It's too, it's too pixelated. But let's export it and see what happens. So let's go to uh, the, the snapshot view, publish to a raster. Let's publish it out to a BMP this time because that should be the best quality out of them all. And uh, let's change the, change the resolution to 1080p. And, and in fact, no, no, let's, let's set it to 4K. So 3840 uh, by 2160. I think it's 340. I'm, that's just off the top of my head. It might be slightly off, but it's around about 4K. Uh, and here we go. So that's created a 24 megabyte image file, which looks something like that. Let's zoom in. It looks all right when you zoomed out. Uh, but when you zoomed in, that's totally unacceptable for any sales material. Totally unacceptable. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. That won't. That won't cut the mustard. I'm afraid that will not cut the mustard. So there's. Uh, there's. I would say there's work to be done. But almost everybody who used Inventor Publisher, including myself, has told Autodesk over the years that that needs to be improved on, and they've not done it over the last five or six years. And I can't see them doing that in the future, unless it's a different team working on it now. Uh, but that's it. That's pretty much it. That's the publisher. That's the new publisher slash presentation view in Inventor 2017. So you've got your new IPN environment. Uh, like I said at the start, I think it should have been plugged into the assembly template, but it isn't. It is where it is, and it is what it is. It's a lot easier to use than it was, but whether or not it's going to be good enough to satisfy the needs of technical authors will be, I guess, for them to judge after they've seen it and used it for themselves. All right, that's it. Thank you very much, guys. If you like the video, like it, subscribe, comment if you haven't done already, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.